Bloomberg's in-house economists just dropped a savage new report that traded their standard China cheerleading for some doom, contending that China, quote, may never overtake the U.S. economy. Meanwhile, the U.S. Commerce Secretary is now warning China has become, quote, uninvestable for foreign companies who had long seen it as a free market paradise. So this is a big deal because for 35 years now, it has been an article of faith that China was going to inherit the earth. China's rise was inevitable, and we were all living on borrowed time. Now, don't get me wrong, we are living on borrowed time. The disastrous policies made since the 2008 crisis, really since Richard Nixon, are putting us on an unsustainable path to permanent stagflation, flattening our growth prospects until we finally hit that financial singularity that is too big to bail out. The problem is China is headed to the same place, maybe even faster. I've done a couple recent videos on China's rapid collapse. In short, she channeled trillions to politically favored industries at the expense of the dynamic bits of the economy, leading to both manufacturing and property now in free fall. Those two sectors make up half of China's economy, much more than the US, so that's dragging the entire country down, leading to rising joblessness, especially among the young who always get fired first. And as in this country, financial and bank failures spreading like wildfire. Bigger and bigger they march towards that moment Beijing can't bail them all out. Now, Bloomberg takes this clown show and runs with it, citing deep-seated structural problems, predicting a slower China for decades to come. Specifically, they now think China could momentarily pip the U.S. sometime in the 2040s, but then immediately fall behind again as China's population shrivels. Thanks to their idiotic one-child policy, that appears to have become a social norm. So seven years after one child ended, China's currently sporting 1.09 births per woman. For a sense, if that continued for a generation, or for three generations, a century, China's population would drop eightfold to about half what it is in the US. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean China's poor, it simply means they're number two, maybe number three if India keeps plugging away, which doesn't really matter day to day, it's more of a prestige and power thing, but it is a big change from the doomsday predictions of the past decades, and it suggests that China may already be past its peak of power. So what's next? I think Bloomberg's being short-sighted, she is not immortal, and China has a lot more free market bureaucrats than the US or, God forbid, Europe. Yes, China's in for some lean days, and those would hit a lot of poor countries like Africa who depend on exports to China. But Xi himself has got a lot of opposition inside the Chinese government, despite building a personal police state, so he could retire surprisingly soon. Moreover, the victory laps are delusional, because unless the West reverses our rapid plunge into socialism, the Asian policy mix will win, whether or not China's on board. So what we see in Korea, Singapore, or Taiwan, where the economy is nurtured because it is the social safety net, because prosperity leads to the rest rather than today's West, which crushes the real economy to buy votes or to fund activists who prefer to burn things instead. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.